Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. In this video, I want to cover all 45 support skills for Prowlers. A lot of you have been asking me for a guide, and while I won't be able to capture video for all of these, I do have pictures of all of them, the names, and I will also tell you which monster unlocks it and how strong it is. Now, please note that some of this is not from the official guide, so some of the motion values are a little bit iffy, but I generally came up with a good assumption from the Japanese community about how strong these things are. So don't take my word for gold, but I think they're pretty accurate. As far as teaching skills, in order to unlock a skill to use or to teach in the dojo, you need to have brought that cat with you to a certain battle. For example, on this first one we're going to be looking at, the Feline Comet, you'll notice underneath the name I have Arzaros. What that means is that you need to have a cat that has this skill with you when you go to hunt. You can either kill it or you can capture it. It's got to be there. Think of it as that the feline is sort of getting inspiration by watching the monster on what they do. And then they're then able to learn the move and teach it to others. Good news is, is once you've unlocked a move, it's unlocked for every single cat. So it doesn't have to be unlocked for every single one. And it's just unlocked forever. So okay, let's jump right on in. The Feline Comet costs 1 point to do, and you can unlock it by killing an Arzaros. It does a nice, super fast forward uh, sort of dive, and it does an upward of, of 3 hits for 20 damage. If you have an impact weapon, it does do impact damage as well, so this is a very fun skill. Okay, next up is the Sumo Stomp. This one <laughs> makes a lot of sense because the Feline learns it from Tetsukabra. What this does is shakes the ground, and it's almost like creating a tremor. So this can upset monsters and create new opportunities. The next one is Claw Dance. This one takes two points to use and you unlock it by killing an Astalos. The motion values are as below. Now this move does take quite a long time to activate. So you're only going to want to do it when a monster is down. So go for the legs, trip it, then do this and you can do a lot of damage. Now I could be wrong, but I do not believe that impact or elemental damage carries over. I think this is all fixed damage. Okay, next one is Taunt. This one is only available for guard cats, or protection cats as they call it in the English version. What it does is it costs two points, you'll do a little nice little butt smack. Unfortunately, the motion takes quite some time to do, but for a limited period of time, I'd say for about six or seven attacks, the monster will pretty much target you. This is very similar to the hammer skill. Now, I haven't been able to really test it and find out myself, but as far as I can read, when you do taunt, you do get a small defense or health increase, and you get auto guard. But again, I've never really gotten that to work for me. I don't know why. Okay, next one is weapon upgrade. This one costs three points, so it's kind of expensive. Um, what this does is for the next 90 seconds, you'll gain 20 base attack and 50% affinity. It's very strong, but again, three points is kind of tough on a fighter cat in order to activate this. Um, but if you have a lot of points to spare, it might be a good one to use. Next one is Furious. This one is exclusive to the fighter cats. It costs five full points, but it will throw your cat into rage mode. Now, if you don't know, because all the cats have the ability to rage if they get hit enough, when you're raging, your affinity goes up, so this one for 50%. You dash faster, you get rock steady, which means that you don't get interrupted by small attacks. You get up faster from knockdown, and you get air plugs. And you also get a special move and combo, which I plan to cover in my tutorial. Pretty much just hit X and A at the same time, and you'll start swinging. Just keep hitting X to continue swinging, and then X and A again to do a finisher. Very cool. Okay, now for the big ones. These are the boomerangs. Now, obviously, if you wanted to be doing a boomerang cat, you want to have big boomerangs and pierce boomerangs because those two have synergy and can work off of each other. I just went ahead and put all the motion values down below so you don't have to worry about looking through them, but the big boomerang is pretty good. It definitely works with increasing the power of pierce. Also note that it also increases the power of that melee combo that you do if you hit A after your second boomerang. And of course the most important one, the pierce boomerangs. Now I definitely recommend if you are a boomerang cat that you activate pierce boomerangs first before you activate big. You'll find that you'll be able to get the gauge up faster um, if you do pierce first and then go for big. Anyways, those are the damage down below. You can look at them later, but pierce and big do mega damage, especially for that melee combo as well. Okay, and finally there's me Mega Boomerang, and a lot of you wonder about like if this is applicable or not, and it really isn't. It's only the, I think, double the motion value of a normal Boomerang, and it does not stack with Big or Pierce. 
So this move, I would say, is pretty useless. Okay, next up is Chestnut Cannon. This is definitely a favorite, I think, from Apex Gaming. If you haven't seen him, go check him out. He just released a new Prowler Slam video, which shows some really stylish ways to knock out and kill monsters using cats. Now, I don't, unfortunately, know the motion, if there is any, or the stun values, but I do know that generally hitting a monster with two Chestnut's Cannons will KO it. So I'm going to guess that it's somewhere around 80 stun value, but again, I don't really know. Okay, next up is Shock Tripper. This one, you'll send out a cannon that creates kind of like a bath of shocking energy. The initial hit, if you can hit them with the chestnut, is 20 motion. And then after every small or so interval, it does 12 damage to the monster. The cool thing about this one is that all that hits do 4 times break damage. Now, that doesn't equal to cutting down their health by 4 times faster. But it does mean that they'll flinch faster, you'll break their parts faster. So, this is a lot more powerful than you think it might be. And then we have Excavator. This is a really funny one to look at if you can just try it out to see it. I don't find it that useful, um, but you'll pretty much dig up and throw about six different items at the monster. The reason why I wouldn't use this online is because you never know what you're going to dig up. It's pretty comical, but sometimes you'll dig up bombs, which can knock around people. Um, sometimes you'll throw up rocks, but in general, I think you're going to be doing a lot of impact damage. Really funny, though, if you're a gunner and you have a Pelico with this. Next up is what I consider the most important skill outside the boomerangs, which is Emergency Retreat. For this one, all you have to do is activate it, and the second you do, you're completely invincible. If you're stuck under a Teostra and he does a supernova, just hit R and Y, and boom, you are completely invincible. You'll go down into the ground, and you'll heal 30 health. This is only costs 1 point, so this is pretty much the best way that a cat has to heal, and also keeps you very, very safe. I definitely recommend that you use this skill. Next one is Camouflage. This is kind of like the sneak skill for hunters. This just makes it harder for you to be targeted, and I believe that you also might get up faster when you get hit. Okay, now it's time to go into Bombs. Now, for the Bombs, the way we're going to be doing it is on the very bottom, you'll see the fixed damage. This is just like Bombs for Hunters, which is like the Petite Barrel Bomb is 5 damage. But the cats also get some motion added to it as well. So this is 2 motion, and all the motion is applied through the modifier. So if you look on the left hand side, you'll see that the bomber cat gets 20% more motion value on the blast than the other cats. Okay, the petite barrel bomb bay is free so anybody can do it, but it's pretty weak at only 5 damage and 2 motion. But there is a stronger version called the small barrel bomb bay, which again any cat can get. So if you can get this, you might be lucky. Uh, 15 damage, 6 motion, not bad. It just takes a little bit longer to throw though, but it is very fun. And then we start getting into the big boys. The large barrel bomb bay is like a large barrel bomb for cats, so 30 damage and 12 motion. Then we go into the bomber exclusive mega barrel bomb bay. This costs 3 points, so it's not going to be able to use this thing all the time, but it is kind of like the main bread and butter, I think, for the bomber cats. 60 damage, 20 for motion, so definitely you want that 20% increase from the bomber cat. And then we go into the overkill, which is the giga barrel bomb bay, which is 4 points and is unlocked by capturing or killing a Shagara Magara. It's 110 damage and 44 motion, so very powerful as expected. Another thing to note is that all the bombs on cats do have blast. So, what I mean by blast, I mean that any hunter nearby is going to get knocked out, so make sure you're careful if you're using bombs. Then we have the Bounce Bombe, which is also free. Now this has 20 motion and or 20 damage and 8 motion, so it's pretty powerful. The problem though is that it's not that easy to hit. However, this is a fun skill to bring with you if you're going up against something like a Kezu and it's up on the wall, you could knock it down. Then we have the Flash Cannon, which is pretty much like a flashbang for Prowlers. However, it does take a little bit longer than it does to throw a flashbang like a Hunter, so you're going to want to sort of understand the right timing. But I love this skill for like a Fighter Cat because it can keep the monster from running away and stuck in the area so you can pound it away. Then we have the Anti-Monster Mine. Now these things are identical to placing a bomb. It just fixes the location and it will automatically blow up if the monster trips it. So very convenient. 30 damage and 12 motion for this one. Then we have the Anti-Monster Mine Plus, which is 60 damage and 20 for motion. And then we have Explosive Roll. So this is a funny motion where you'll just start running around the area, blowing up and doing damage. It's only the same as like a like a tiny barrel bomb, so only 5 damage, 
um, but it is quite funny. Okay, then we have the Wrath of Meow. So this is the tank move. It costs five points. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as strong as you might think it is, but you are invincible during this mode, so anytime you get hit, you're totally fine. It does 10 damage and then two motion. Um, you can eat for feline artillery, and that will increase the damage of the motion. But honestly, if you're using a bomber cat with everything max level 50, you're only going to be doing about 30 damage a shot. So think of this as being anywhere from 20 to 30 a shot. So very fun, very cute to use, but not exactly a game changer. Then we have the herb horn, which is zero, just replenishes 20 health. It's like an herb for um, everyone in the sort of same area. Then we have the detox horn. This is a really great one to have on a palico because they're very smart about when to use it. It'll cure poison, or if you know like when you face against like an Uragon, you'll get hit with a certain dust that makes it so you can't use items, like you can't eat potions or something. It'll cure that as well. It also cures 10 health, which is really nothing. Uh, but again, a very nice skill to have, especially on a Palico. Then we have the Health Horn, so this is going into the Healing Cats. The Health Horn is definitely something you want if you scout a Heal Cat. Um, it's about the same as a Potion for everybody in the same area. And then you have the Heal Cat Exclusive True Health Horn. Costs 3 points, so it's pretty expensive, but it does heal 50 health, so it's sort of like a life powder for everybody. Okay, moving on, we have Vase of Vitality. This is another really good one for a Palico because they know when to use it. It heals various types of ailments and also raises your natural healing power. Now, it's not like Hunter Oasis, so it's not going to stay active for your Hunter over and over. I think you just touch it once and you get its effect. Okay, moving on, we have the Soothing Roll, which is the same thing as sort of like that rolling attack with a bomb, except for this one, every few seconds, you'll heal a little bit of stuff. It's like... 10 health or something so I guess it's okay for running away and healing at the same time okay then we have parting gift this is another one you definitely want to give to a palico not a prowler um, but basically the cat will jump into the ground and then leave behind like a healing item this is like the same type of healing items you might find inside of like the arena like a uh, first aid med or something like that now there's no invincibility when you do this attack or this move so it's not really that useful for the two points that it cost then we have Dung Bomb, and Dung Bomb is awesome because it's absolutely free, anybody can learn it, and it means that you're able to then get monsters out of the area if you don't want them in there, or you can just dung small monsters to get them out of the way, or if you get pinned down, you can dug the monster off you, so very, very good, powerful skill to have if you're scouting a cat. Then we have Trampoline, or another favorite from Apex, so this launches sort of like a trampoline on the ground. And allows any player or cat to jump off of it and perform aerial attacks. Then we have the ultrasonic horn, which is pretty much the same as a sonic bomb um, for cats. So if you're up against like a cephadrome that's underneath the ground, go ahead and play this and it could knock it up. Okay, then we have the demon horn. I admit that this is a little expensive. For only 10 attack for 180 seconds, 2 points is a little much. But maybe for a palico, it might do good. On the same side, we have the Armor Horn, which is the same thing, but for defense. And then we have the Cheer Horn, which you unlock by killing a Mizutsune. So this raises the uh, rate in which your Hunter Arts or your Palico skill gauges increases. So this is pretty helpful, um, especially if you have it on a Palico. And then we have the Charisma Exclusive Palico Rally. This is really, really powerful. It increases everyone's attack in here, well, for your cats. Increases their attack by 10 and their health by 20 for 180 seconds. It's very cool to just play it once and it powers everybody up. Then we have one of my favorites, which is Go Fight Win, which is the cheerleader. So once you start doing this attack, you'll keep on cheering until you get hit or you pull out of it. And what it does is while you're cheering on, everybody in the room, hunters and prowlers included, will get unlimited stamina. And for all the cats out there, it will lower the cost of every single skill by one which means that if you have like a shock trap that's four, it will cost three. If you have, um, let's say, the emergency retreat, which is only one, it becomes free. So, very nice skill. Okay, then we have Pitfall Prison, which costs four points, and you get it by killing the Lagia Cruz. Now, if you're using an assist cat, it does have Pro Trapper. If you put that on, that cost will go down to three. So, much more useful at three points. In the same vein, we have Shock Prison, which I definitely like on my Assist Cat because it offers a cheaper opportunity to trap monsters 
than only using the next one, which is the awesome assist only Poison Prison. This thing costs a massive 5 points to do, but trust me, it's worth it. It places a trap hole that has poison. This is something that no hunter can do. And while no one really knows the poison values, it's pretty much a guaranteed poison almost every time. I don't say guaranteed absolutely because the second time you do it to a monster, most monsters will still poison a second time, but some won't. Um, but it's massive poison damage and it's a full trap hole, so very good. Okay, next up we have the Plunder Rang, which is a collect only skill. What it does is you'll throw a boomerang and if you hit the monster, it will then fly back and drop a shiny at your feet that every single hunter in the area can pick up. So this is sort of like a Kayamba skill where you can steal an item, but everybody gets to pick it up, which is really cool. Then we have the Pilfer, which is pretty much the same version, but it's melee, so it's not as safe to do. So it's easier to accidentally get hit out of this thing. Um, but it's still the same idea where you steal an item and everybody can pick it up. And there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at all 45 different support skills. Sorry I went through them so fast, but I didn't want this video to be too long. Um, a lot of these are really good. So just, if you're doing a boomerang build, you're going to want the big boomerang, the pierce boomerang, and emergency retreat. Anything beyond that, though, I think it's up to you. I think popular choices are dung bomb or shock trapper or stuff like that. But honestly, this is just your play style. So choose the ones that you like and have a lot of fun. Until next time, happy hunting.